Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one I'll be making a fantastic dessert and it's this amazing apple crumble. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, this is the dish I'll be using to make this crumble. And the dish dimensions are on screen. No need to prep the dish in any way. And the first job is to zest and juice a large lemon. The zest of the lemon gives the apples a nice citrus flavour. And the juice is mainly to coat the apples when peeled and diced to prevent them from browning. OK, I'll just set those aside for now. Right, onto the apples. First, pour the lemon juice into a clean bowl to put the peeled and diced apples in. You can use any apples you prefer for this recipe. Today I'm using Granny Smith's, so they're a good all-rounder. And as I'm cooking them before they go into the crumble, these will hold their shape well. You can of course use Bramley's, known as cooking apples, but they tend to go a bit mushy. You can peel and dice your apples whichever way you used to. Once you have yours peeled, dice them straight into the bowl with the lemon juice, coating them as you go. Right, once they're all peeled and diced, give them a final toss in the lemon juice. And just out of interest, my one kilogram, that's two and a quarter pound of apples at the start, are now down to 720 grams, that's approximately one pound nine and a half ounces. But that's ample for the size of the dish that we're using today. Right, that's another job out of the way, and I'll cover the bowl for now. Another use for my shower cap trick. On to the crumble mix. To a large bowl, add the flour. Next, add the soft brown light sugar. If you can't get that, just use ordinary granulated sugar, but the brown sugar gives a better caramel flavour and a chewy texture to the finished crumble. Next to go in is the oats. Simple porridge or quick oats is fine. Mine is ordinary Quaker porridge oats. And now for the spices. I'll start with half a teaspoon, that's two grams of ground cinnamon. And the final dry spice is a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I like to use freshly grated nutmeg, but the pre-ground nutmeg is fine too. And before you go any further, give those a quick toss together with your fingers. And now add the butter. Make sure your butter is cold. Straight from the fridge is ideal. Right, get your hands into it and start rubbing it together through your fingers until there are no longer any pieces of butter left in the mix. In real time this should take about 3 or 4 minutes. A good way of telling if it's ready is to squeeze a little in your hand and then it should easily break up again like so. And that's it, your crumble mix is done. So get a cover on that too and set it aside for now. And before going any further, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 355 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. Right on to the next stage and it's time to cook the apples. And to cook these we get to play with some melted sugar. 
So get a non-stick frying pan pretty hot at first. Then add the sugar from the filling recipe and allow it to melt. Keep lifting the pan off the heat so as not to burn it. It should be ready once the colour is golden brown and just starting to smoke. So on and off the heat until it reaches that point. Now pour the apples into the hot pan and keep them moving. You're basically frying the apples in sugar. This gives the apples a lovely caramel flavour. Keep them moving for at least two minutes. Once that time's up, add the lemon zest, cinnamon and butter. Incidentally, if you're using unsalted butter, you'll need to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Even when you're doing sweet dessert dishes like this one, salt does bring out all of the flavours. Now give that three or four minutes stirring continuously until the butter has all melted and you have a nice sauce building up in the pan. And that's the apples cooked. Time to put it all together now. And this part couldn't be easier. Pour the hot apples into the dish and level them off. Once that's done, pour over your crumble mix and level that off too. Gently compressing it. How easy was that? Right, time to get it into the preheated oven. And to remind you, the temperature should be 180 Celsius, 355 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 4. Now set your timer for 40 minutes. And at this point, I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Once your time's up, get it out and onto a heatproof surface. Sorry for the steamed up camera, I must have added a little too close to the oven. And you can serve it straight away, piping hot from the oven. And doesn't that look fantastic? And it smells even better. Right, mine's been sitting for about five minutes until I get my cameras ready. So I'll try a little with some nice double cream. Ice cream or my homemade custard will be good also. You can see how the custard's made in a separate video. I'll leave a link in the description box or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen. We usually serve this classic with hot custard in the winter months in the UK. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Those apples are not too sweet and slightly tart. And that crumble mix is crisp at first and then it goes chewy. Delicious and definitely warrants a big thumbs up. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Esther Fowler, Richard Buck, Kirsty Johnson, Owen Wright, Kenneth Hunter, David Allenson, Tammy Black, Anthony Jones, Simon Kennedy, Randy R. Roche and Jill Clay. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. 
Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.